Good afternoon, guys and gals. We're bringing some people in. Um, still going to have some people joining us here, so we're going to kind of give it a few minutes just to let everybody hop on the hop on the stream. Hope everybody's having a great Thursday. Jonathan here, Brian over here. How's it going, guys? Trey is traveling today, so he is um, not going to be with us. Yep. But this is a typical live session, Camwood Live. Every Thursday, we join together and send out a live stream to meet up with you guys, um, parents, coaches, uh, maybe some players, to answer any questions that you may have in regards to the program that your kids are going through, whether it be part one, part two, uh, part whatever, part game. A lot of folks are in games right now, so they're dealing with game issues. Yeah. Um, being able to take that that swing from the tee and transfer it over into the game, mm -hmm. we're dealing with that all the time as well. So now is the time for all of you um, to chime in and, and ask us some questions if you have them. You can type it in the chat box, or if you'll go to the reactions, you'll see down there where you can raise your hand, um, and we'll be able to unmute you and and bring you in and let you talk to us that way. So we'll go ahead and give um, everybody just a few more minutes to log in. We've still got some people joining us. Um, but as you have questions, type them in the chat box or raise your hand. I'm gonna check. Got Jonathan's girl here with us today. She's in the shop. But um, like kind of what Jonathan was talking about, um, game situations. I know y'all are dealing with a lot of uh, younger kids, youth players out there. Um, they're getting into games and kind of having a little bit off swing, swinging and missing, and their swing doesn't look bad. There's just little things tweaking that y'all need to have. Y'all just let us know kind of what's going on, whether it be the results not having good contact, any of that kind of stuff. I've got to see my little mini me running yeah. around here. She's bossing us around today. Brian, your son hit a home run the other night. Yep. Son, first Set, year. Eight years old. Yep, first, first year game. playing. His first in the park home run. He drove it into center field. It was a nice hit. It was a great hit. Line yeah. drive, just like you want to see. Um, and that's and he's a kid we talk about a lot on here sometimes too, just because mm -hmm. we see him very regular regularly. You see him every day, obviously, yeah. but um, he's a great example of, you know, if you have younger kids that aren't able to jump right into the program, mm -hmm. you can still get thing positive uh, improvements, positive benefits from the Camwood and from the program just yeah. by modifying it to that kid, mm -hmm. depending on their age, their age and um, their ability, their strength, and all that kind of stuff. Still got some folks joining in. Welcome to all of you. If this is your first time, um, this is an opportunity for you to ask us questions. This is something that that we constantly tell people when they're when they're getting ready to purchase Cam Woods that you're not going to find anything like this anywhere else in regards to having access um, to the people that really know how the system works. Yes. Um, we are as hands on as we can possibly be. We're as personable as we can possibly be. Hence, this live session right here um, that we started doing really kind of at the beginning of the year to yeah. give you you all an opportunity to ask us questions. So now is that time. Feel free. Type away. Uh, raise your hand. We'll unmute you and let you ask us. We're not near too worried about awkward silences either, so we'll, we'll just sit here for a minute because yeah. we, we know you have questions. This is, yeah. this is stuff that Don't we know you, you have questions about. Mm -hmm. And I know if y'all didn't tune in last week, um, my son, who I work with, is eight. We also had another kid who's 10. It went over a uh, left center field Monday night when he was in his first game. It was a shot. Um, but the little things, I know y'all get the program sometimes for these younger kids. The little things to them, they can comprehend and understand to the point of where they can hear you say something in game, whether you're coaching or whatever. 
and it really affects their result. Um, I know my son and me, we work a little bit on my knee drive with him and just hands because um, that's what's going to start the swing and always make sure that his chest and eyes are on the ball. Those, those three little things I have for him really help him and he understands them well. Um, I know a lot of kids are out there having that issue where they're missing the balls and all this, but it's mostly because that front shoulder and chest coming off, really trying to just swing, sword swing that top hand through. And it, I mean, I'm talking about most every single one. There's some kids that you'll see that are sometimes better athletes or just have better coaching than others in that age group. So their swing looks better, but everybody, all those kids, I, I talk to parents all the time, they can get to that point. They can get better and understand it. I mean, mm -hmm. there's they're these eight year olds are smart. Yeah, smart out, yeah, perfect. they are out smart. You can let them, but um, don't get frustrated sometimes with sometimes I'm not comprehending everything that you're trying to say to them. Find the things they understand and build on that. And and it and it's something you just have to play around with. Something you have to just attack from different sides until that clicks for him. And it works, okay? He's able to do it in his swing visually and with his feel. And that's something that you can have and tell them even when they're playing in a game. I know before everybody gets up there, he's sitting there by the fence, I go up there and just say, remember to keep your chest and eyes on the ball and just swing smooth. That's it. And it it plays. I mean, he went three for three that day, single, double, and then inside the park home run. So, I mean, those little things help them because it gives them direct. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of kids, when they're up there, they're just trying to swing and hit the ball. But sometimes they do better when they give a little bit of direction of what they're trying to do when they're up there. Absolutely. So that's just a little bit for some of them younger kids out there. Um, now, older, I would say we had one come here, didn't have such a good game Tuesday, Jared. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these older kids, um, they get caught up a little bit to me in the mental side of hitting. Yeah. Not from the aspect of the mechanics we work, but into the aspect of I'm about to face a pitcher I know is good because he's one of my friends, and now everything we've worked on in the cage and everything has gone out the window because mm -hmm. now I'm on the defensive side. The yeah, I'm on the defensive side. I'm worried about getting a hit, and we got to understand when we're going through this program and figuring out all these things that we are good hitters. We know how to do the things properly. Okay, we have to be confident in that and confident in our abilities at the plate and not let good pitching scare us. We have to get excited about good pitching because we're good hitters. We've been practicing these things for 30 days or however long y'all been practicing them. Mm -hmm. And we have to start getting into the mentality of I'm a good hitter. I want to see good pitching so I can showcase what I've learned mm -hmm. and be confident in that. So right. um, I think that can be an issue, especially with older kids is – they get on the defensive side of things. They revert back to everything and they, used to, they used to do, and it's and it messes them up. And sometimes they'll come back and be like, "Well, this ain't working." Well, it's not working because you're not doing what we're teaching here. And that comes and that and that comes from I think when you get into this practice is learning it, okay? Yeah. Learning how the swing functions, learning every aspect of it. Don't just come into these sessions and just swing and try to produce a result. Right. Absolutely. Understand that knowledge that this program is giving you about how the swing functions and you will be more confident in your knowledge about it and ability to play. Yeah, I mean if you're if you're coming in here to to just see the result or you're going through the program, you're trying to do the 30 day program or the 60 day program just to see the result, the mm -hmm. back end of it, I mean, you're only gonna see that result for so long. Yeah. Because when things start to get a little shaky, you're not going to know where to go to fix it. Yeah. You're not going to know what adjustments to make because you didn't learn it. You just did it. And yeah. I mean, repetition is good, but repetition without, I mean, knowledge, without thought, mm -hmm. without really understanding why and what's going on, it's yeah. not, not going to help us. So not only does the program really improve your mechanics, but it will and has shown to prove um, or to improve the knowledge of the swing, the mm -hmm. knowledge of hitting in, yeah. all, in all areas, all age groups too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Here we go. Coach Garcia, how you doing, man? My team is just beginning to play games. We did notice when we were doing live BP or machine BP with some VLO. Seems like some of the boys are uh, their barrels are not releasing on time to contact. 
the bat stays in lag too little too long? Is this more of an issue with the lower half? Um, it can possibly be an issue with the lower half, depending on where the pitch location is. Um, if they're if you're throwing them inside and they're not seeming to get the barrel around there to it, then it's probably because they're losing rotation on the lower half. They're not getting fully rotated to where the barrel can line up. Um, if it's on an outside pitch or middle away, I'm going to say that it's probably because they're trying to still control that with the top hand, mm -hmm. which is going to make it look like it's lagging and dragging even slower. If my bottom hand will move correctly, then the bat is going to take a forward path. It's not going to lag like you're talking about. It's not going to be dragging through the zone. I don't want it to drag through the zone. I just want it to, I mean, be in the zone as long as possible. Yeah. I'm trying to get right to the zone, and because of where that barrel ends up and releases, it's going to stay in the zone. Mm -hmm. So I would probably say it's probably a top hand issue at that point. Yeah, I want you to also think about um, when they're swinging. Just pay attention to this. Um, I call it a double load. Their lower half's loading, and then their hands load. This can create a bad delay with your hands because now I've loaded my legs and they're about to fire and then I double load my hands. So then they get away from my lower half and mm -hmm. away from my body. This can create bad lag back to the zone because they're not able to catch their hands back up to the body and they end up coming through. I would like, you probably need to pay attention to that when they're doing that yeah. BP, especially with fast pitch, faster pitches because they think they need to gear up more to hit faster pitching, which they don't. They just need to be quicker. Mm -hmm. So I would tell them to try to think more of a reaction to that faster pitching rather than gearing up for it. Um, and just wash their hands. I've seen double load with those hands, the lower half, then the hands, and then it always results in that kind of lag you're talking about. Yeah, we see, I see this a lot in I mean, older players, big league players. I mean, the higher levels they go, folks are kind of wanting them to, they like seeing this longer arm position as they're getting ready to go through the zone. I don't like to see that. That's going to make you – I mean, this long arm is telling me that it, that you're going to take a long time to get your bat through the zone because it's going to be harder to stay inside the pitch yeah. and stay on line. Yeah. So, I mean, again, top hands are probably getting out here. I've got to feel the bottom hand start working a little bit more forcefully, um, efficiently mm -hmm. would be a good word for that. So, start there. Make sure you're paying attention to those hands too when you're when you're watching them take those swings. Yeah. Um, any recommendations for increasing bat speed? My 12 youth son uses the adult trainer as well as the youth trainer. Um, bat speed, we do have 10 day bat speed challenge. That is, you can find that on um, the uh, All American program portal. 10 day layout, you're basically going to go through a uh, bat speed drill, which is a lot of two and twos with your game bat and your Camwood bat. Um, but if they've already been through the program, they should have seen some increases in their bat speed just because of their mechanics improving. Like we're kind of talking about the same thing we were talking about with Coach Garcia. If my top hand is wanting to drive that swing, my bat is being real long back here behind me. If my bottom hand will drive that swing, my bat's moving forward quicker. So, AKA bat speed. My yeah. bat is moving faster through the ball. Um, so just working on the one hand drill is gonna increase bat speed. Um, but if you haven't seen the 10-day bat speed challenge, be sure to go look for that mm -hmm. um, on the All-American Program portal and, and taking through that. Be sure to go through the program first. Talk about yeah. that a minute. I mean, a lot of folks want to go through the bat speed challenge well, first. Yeah, I mean, the aspect of what he's talking about is the 30-day is going to get you your base, okay? Before you can ever think about increasing anything, you have to have good mechanics, good base. This is not just in hitting. This is fielding weight room, all that kind of stuff. You have to have a good foundation before you can increase weight, increase speed, and all these other things in your mechanics. Because I talk about this a lot with our kids is you're going to eventually, once you get the foundation and learn how to do these things, you're going to have to push your swing to the point of my max speed with my max control, mm -hmm. okay, of my mechanics. I can't sit here and try to swing so hard that my mechanics break down. I got to find that that tipping point on the side of I have fast mechanics, good fast bat speed, and my mechanics, I can still maintain them. Okay. Yeah. And that that's where we like to go to the 30 day first before mm -hmm. we get into the 10 day. Because the 10 day is where we figure out where that is. Right. We figure out that max where before my mechanics break down. But the 30 day we worry about just those mechanics and then we build on them. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise so, you're going through the bat speed challenge yeah. and you don't know when you're you don't know when they're breaking down and when mm -hmm. they're not. All yeah. you know is what feels fast. Yeah. 
And a lot of times what feels faster is not really faster. Great questions there. Any other questions, guys? Bring them on. There's your, there's your two leadoff hitters right there. Yeah. Yeah. I jabbed an arrow in my finger the other day, too. A little higher. I felt like I completely punctured a hole in my hands. Still some people joining in. Welcome to those of y'all that are just now coming in. Um, y'all hopefully already know the drill. If you don't, this is your first time. We are taking questions in regards to the 30-day program, the 60-day program, any program um, that we have through Camwood, infield program as well. If you don't know about the infield program, that program is out. It's um, I think we still have a few people, a few spots available for the mm -hmm. second, the second launch yep. of that. So you can find that um, camwoodinfield.com. And I have to say, all of you that have younger kids, you need to go get the infield program. Yes. Because those bases that they are teaching is going to help your kid go all the way through baseball. And the things I've been seeing out there on the field that have been not taught just because coaching sometimes just doesn't know. You have volunteers and stuff out there. Um, the ability for those kids to field is hard. Okay, they they don't have good mechanics. They don't want to. They don't know how to get down the ball. They don't know how to use their hands. They mm -hmm. don't know how to catch in the air. And all these things. That infield program is going to help so much for those kids. Yes, and giving and giving them a really good base going into the rest of their careers as baseball if they look, if they like it. Mm -hmm. um, I urge y'all, especially those that have younger kids that are just getting started in this. They need to go through that. Um, it'll be very beneficial for them. And I know Ralph the Rip sometimes even think, well, it's going to cost money. But at the end of the day, those lessons on the back end from having to do lessons over and over and over with other people throughout their career, it, it'll limit that. Yep. They'll have a really good foundation with this program so that they don't have to worry about seeking out help later because they'll already have this skill. Mm -hmm. And I would probably I mean, be willing to, to say, um, that a lot of folks that have went through the program have not had as much of a need or felt as much of a need to have private lessons with other instructors oh, yeah. um, because they're seeing just as much improvement doing a lot of the things on their own. Not saying that they don't go to instructors, not saying yeah. that they don't get extra work, things like that. I, all that stuff is taking place. Some of your instructors were the ones that introduced um, the Campbell back yeah. to your kids. So yeah. kudos to them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I mean – not all of these kids I mean, are really given a good foundation yeah. of infielding, hitting, catching, throwing, pitching at a young age, seven, yeah. eight years old. You're watching yeah. all these kids in, in recreational leagues, mm -hmm. um, some travel ball leagues, the younger that they are, going through games, playing games, and they have no idea where to go. They yeah. have no idea how to field a ground ball. They have no idea how to catch a ball thrown to them. They're stepping with the wrong foot, and coaches are hollering and screaming about why about things that why we're not winning. Yeah. Rather than helping the kid yeah, be teacher. better at the game, helping the kid improve their skill. Those younger ages are development ages. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves to win. We all about winning. I get that, but the younger age groups, you should care less if you win or lose. Yeah. If your kids cannot catch, throw, make solid contact, and run around the field correctly, then we're not doing things right at practice. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit of a tangent there, but y'all are giving us plenty of time to talk. Yeah, they're going to do it. Here's one, just joined. My son just turned six. How many cuts a day should he take? Um, closer to your, your son's age there, Brian. I mean, yeah, um, I'll say usually before every game, Carl comes in here um, – we probably do 25 to 30 reps, I would say. I give them about 10 to 15, kind of warm up, um, maybe Cam Wood. And then after that, we kind of go to his game bat and we start working on the start of the swing. And then once I see that he's, hit, he's gotten very consistent, his chest staying on the ball and all that kind of stuff, I usually stop him. I said, okay, you feel good about your swing? That's all we need to do is that. Yeah. I don't try to – you don't have to go in there and give the kid 100 reps. He's six years old. It will not last. His mechanics won't last. His not his mind won't last. All that kind of stuff. 
You don't have to get into so much reps. You just need to make every rep count is what I like to say. So even though we're doing 30 reps, I make sure that he knows when he's doing stuff wrong, knows where he needs to fix them, and make sure those reps are very good quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where I would start thinking about these younger kids is the quality of reps, not as much not as 100. Quantity, yeah, yeah, the quantity doesn't doesn't matter so much because they won't be able to handle it right now. Um, when they get older, they will when they get stronger. But for right now, you need to think about the quality of the reps, the quality of knowledge you're giving them and making sure it's not too much in the aspect of they don't really understand it, but just the right amount, and then they should be fine. I mean, going the last three games he's had, he's done a lot better at the plate than – the first half of the season when they had scrimmage games because he's starting to feel a swing out. He's starting to know what feels right. And then that's starting to transfer over into the game. Yeah. And that's and that's just what I would say think about with those younger kids, those six, seven, eight year olds, possibly even nine year olds, depending. This is doing good. College level tips for improving pitch recognition. Swing under fastballs and over off speed. Okay. Um, pro level tips. I think the reason why a lot of the uh, college kids don't recognize pitches very well is because um, once they see this near the zone, they decide to swing. The reason why we start from the knee is to give ourselves time to recognize the pitch before our hands even get into it. Okay. That split second you're giving your knee to fire and recognize the spin, the speed of the pitch, gives you enough time to fire fire the direction in the right area. Because I think a lot of kids, they recognize fastball right out of the hand. They're not sure where it's located, so then they just start their swing. And most of the times it's their hands that start the swing. And my hands without my lower half giving it direction is going to be off in some form or fashion. It's either going to cause you to spin around, get you to get out around the ball, drop all these things without your knee and you're giving yourself direction for the pitch. And I think that's a big issue with older kids is not giving your time, not giving your body the right direction or off the rip, which is the knee. Yeah, I would say this too. I mean, being one that did a lot of those things that you're talking about, swinging under fastballs, over curveballs, I struck out a lot, I mean, in college for, I mean, a period of time. And the reason was because I was starting the swing from my hands. I would be, I mean, more trying to get back, but really more worried about getting this way, yeah. trying to get back to the ball because I didn't want to get beat. A lot of times if you're worried about getting beat, you're going to be here on fastballs. If you're trying to catch up, everything's yeah. going up and underneath the ball, yeah. and you're going to be here on those curveballs way out front because of the delay in speed yeah. um, and all that kind of stuff there. So you've really got to make sure you're starting the swing from the ground. You're starting it with your lower half. But when you get to the actual thought process, you've got to let the ball trap. Yeah. You've got to let it get there. It's not going to beat you if it's a fastball. Um, in regards to just picking up spin, seeing the ball a little better, um, I used to picture a cone right here. So basically, small end of a cone, big end of a cone right here where the release point was. If the ball comes, if the hand comes straight, ball comes straight out of the cone, it's going to be a fastball. Or change up. That's the only one that's going to get you. Fastball comes straight out. If it comes out of the side, slider. Mm -hmm. If it comes out of the top of the cone, curveball. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the ball's going to jump up out of the hand on a curveball. Most of the time, it's going to come out of the side of the hand on a slider. Um, what else is there? That's the two that always got me. If they have more than four pitches. If they got more than that, I mean, right. hit their fastball. I mean, yeah. a lot of those things, the, the swinging over the off speed, he can fix that by adjusting his fastball swing. If he can get mm -hmm. that fastball and make contact on that pitch, he'll never have to see that purple or off speed pitch. Good question there. Chris is talking about um, the infielder program, having trouble with the discord part. Not sure why I'm unable to type messages in there. That's going to be a question for Trey. Um, Have you done the next one? Spam? There should be a way, Chris, if you'll go into the program portal. Yeah. Um, and I'll send you my email because I'll be able to pull this up a little bit later and send you a more detailed 
outline of how to get to it. But if you'll um, email me that same question, you should be able to go to the info or the Camwood program portal, um, click Discord, and there'll be a copy and paste link right there that you'll have to copy and paste inside of your Discord chat to be able to message. All those instructions should be listed right there as well. But that's my email address for you to email that question to, and I'll get that answer from Trey. Um, this is a sizing question here um, from Chris as well. She says her son uses a 31 inch bat, um, 31 youth, he's 13. I think he needs to go up to the adult. Should I go to the 31? Um, and he said he might stay at a 31 in the high school, depends on the kid. I'm not sure if I should go 31 or 32. How big is your kid, um, Chris? That's my first question. Because I, 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 it really depends either way. If they're more on the growing side, if they're on the bigger side, I'm going to say go to the 32. It's going to last you a little longer. If they're more of a smaller kid, they need a little bit more strength, then I would go with a 31 adult. Um, just because you're going to have one inch less and one ounce less to deal with. Five foot six, super skinny. I go 31 adult, and I mean, don't sweat it too much. Go 31 inch adult. He'll have more weight. That'll make him stronger. Yeah. Um, the longer he swings it, at one point he'll he's going to hit a growth spurt. He's going to, I mean, eventually put size on. And when he does, he'll probably be able to skip the 32 and go to the 33. That'd yeah. Be I would say so. That would be my, my Especially suggestion. if he's used to the weight of the 31-inch. I mean, that's going to be heavier than anybody ever swings anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just bump him up to the 33 after that. Perfect. Very good. Any other questions? Every looks, everything looks good with my son's swing, but I've noticed the last few games uh, he's been falling – Fouling the ball straight back seems to be under every ball. That's going to be like we were talking about a while ago. Lower half's not doing what it's supposed to, and so our upper body's trying to compensate. Um, and this is a great way to put it to me. I love explaining it like this. Everybody, a lot of times when they're under pitches, if they're fouling ball straight back, it's because they want to get the ball in the air. Yeah. It's what everybody wants to do. They want the ball to go up. In order for the ball to take a flight going up, power has to come from the bottom of that ball. If it comes from the top, ball's going straight into the ground. Yeah. So if we're constantly trying to get power from our upper body, I don't, I don't care how much you try. You have to be perfect to get that ball lifted. Yeah. If you're anything else, you're topping that ball or you're beating that ball straight in the ground. So we've got to start from the lower half, keep this level. Keep our upper body as level as we can, shoulders level, so we can stay as flat through the zone. Because, again, the pitch is traveling here. Pitch it traveling here. So, if we're allowing our upper body to get to this position, you're going to be yeah. under everything. You're going to be fouling balls straight back. Yeah. A lot of you could probably take pictures or videos of your kids' swings and see the first thing they do be this. Before yeah. they do anything else in the swing, they may load. The first thing that's going is that front shoulder. And so, now – I. Even if my hands do go, I'm going to miss that ball out front because mm -hmm. my arm's now going up instead of yep. through that pitch. Yeah. I'll just – I'll think about when y'all are practicing or doing reps to think – I've been doing this a lot lately with some of our kids is control, okay? Make sure that they're having control and they're swing in those practice sessions and not worrying so much about results, swing as hard as they can. Before anything, if we don't have control in our practice, we're not going to have control in the game. Yep. That goes into direction and anything else. So, if y'all are having these issues where they're trouble with direction in the game, y'all need to go back to practice and make sure that control is there. And I'm talking about no stepping out, no spinning off, falling over, all that kind of stuff. We have to yep. have control on the ground and in our legs. And I think that will help a lot in the game. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Any others? Um, Chris is asking here, uh, any coaches, Camwood coaches in the state of Pennsylvania, close to Philadelphia, I'm looking to find a coach nearby. Not at the moment. However, that does bring up a great point. We are in talks of getting ready to launch our first Camwood cert, uh, certification program yep. um, for instructors mainly, 
but anybody that's a coach, an instructor, a facility owner that wants to learn and be certified to teach the Camwood program. Um, that price would be $2,000 to receive the certification. And again, you have to look at this as, I mean, you're a facility owner, you're a coach, you're somebody that's going to be developing kids for a long period of time. You're going to see a return on that $2,000. Um, a lot of the, I mean, when we first started, you'll make that back in lessons in your first month. Yeah. Um, but again, the certification programs are in the talks. Uh, we're getting ready to release our first date for when we're going to do that. So if you have any facilities, any coaches that would be interested or that are interested in being certified to teach this system, um, y'all are already asking about it. That's why we're getting ready to do it because yeah. we know we can only be we can only be in one place at one time. Yeah. So we can't be in all of your different towns every day to be with your kid. And you need somebody like that to help you. Um, we've mentioned it that, I mean, obviously folks going through the program don't have the need to see a hitting coach as often. However, yeah. there are times that you need a Camwood certified instructor, somebody that knows the system, knows what they're looking for, and knows how to get the kid to feel it and get to the right, the right goal. Mm -hmm. um, you need those people in your area. So just be aware of that. Mention that to anybody that you know. Um, Camwood certification programs are being ready to come out very, very soon. My son's having trouble flying out to center and right field as a right-handed hitter. Um, my guess there is he's probably pulling off the ball. If the ball's getting way up in the air, he's coming across, and so he's trying to push his hands out to make it go that way. Yeah. He's got to stay on that ball and drive straight. Yeah. I used to do the same thing. I was real rotational up top, and as I'd rotate, my hands would have to go away from my body to drive it to the opposite field. Yeah. Now you're coming across the line that the pitch is moving on. Now you're putting side spin on the ball yeah. that you're hitting. Um, if you're a little underneath, the ball's not going to carry. It's going to the right fielder or it's going to the foul line or it's going to hang up in the air for the center fielder to get there. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to this front shoulder. Yeah. Make sure that we're rotating and firing that rotational stuff from the backside, the hip and the knee, not here. Mm -hmm. This is just hands driving mm -hmm. inside the ball. Yes, uh, Chris, you asked, we'll list those coaches by names and state once they're certified. Mm -hmm. Basically, what we're going to do, we'll have a lot of you have probably been to Dick Sporting Goods or, I mean, online, um, Tractor Supply. I'm, I'm a redneck. So, Tractor Supply, mm -hmm. all those places like that, you can go to those websites and find a dealer. Type in your zip code. It'll pull up um, an area where the store is. We're going to basically put a map of the United States on the Camwood website um, and have our certified instructors pinned on that map. So, you can go in, type your zip code in, and you'll be able to find one, um, hopefully within driving distance of your of your town. Yeah. Um, now, it, right off the bat, it may be a couple hours, maybe a few hours from your house, um, but it's a lot better than having to fly all the way across the country yeah. to come see us, or us having to fly all the way across the country to come see you. Um, it just, it helps us spread the love. This is a team. We're trying to build a team of people to help us teach this program. All right. Looking at a ball in flight after back contact, I hear different opinions, backspin, knuckle flight, hit through the ball, cutter flight. What do you guys say me? What do you say? Hit the ball correctly. Backspin. Okay. Backspin means you're properly hitting down and through the ball to create that backspin. A good way to think about it is a pitcher. Okay, you don't see pitchers going from here straight sideways. Pitchers release and go through the ball with their release. That's the same thing the bat will be doing with that back spin. It's going down through the ball, creating that spin and through. And that's the kind of flight we want. We want that back spin flight through the ball. That's going to create a longer flight, and it's going to create that little rise too. So I would say when people are talking to you about ball flight, you want the back spin off the bat. If there's anything else you got to think spin-wise, it's going to go towards that spin, that side spin, that knuckle. And it, the knuckle's the worst because it just, it's just going to go down. There's not going to be any type of flight to it. It's just going to knuckle straight into the ground because it doesn't have any spin to cut through. So I would say knuckling 
be the best. That's what that's why we really focus on getting our knob past the ball because that allows us to get through it when we release and whip that bat through and create that backspin. Okay. Jude. My son's 24 days into the Camelot 30 day hitting program of off of a tee. How difficult is it to you to transfer the Camelot swing from a tee to a live baseball game? Is there a pitching machine that Camelot suggests for a 12 year old? Thank you. Um, why do you think he needs a machine to transfer that into a game? Is what I would ask. I don't necessarily think he needs a machine because uh, depending on his age, um, even younger kids are eventually going to get out of the machine. Mm -hmm. um, I would start thinking about throwing over maybe soft toss to live arm. That's better than I think a machine would be. I would agree. Because um, yeah. the machine is really, it really teaches you, because you know where it's going to be almost every time unless they're sitting there changing fastball and curveballs. So you're kind of going to get into a habit of swinging where the ball is going to be rather than picking the ball up and having a and starting everything where you need to. You get in the habit of trying to time it. Yeah, you, and you time it because you know that it's going to come out the same spot. It's going to be in the same area. And, so. and if you've ever been a hitter and yeah. and you've been asked to try to time it, it is so hard to just time it. We yeah. have to – I'm a bigger advocate of um, – I mean, like a lot of folks will ask us, I mean, we have a kid that's getting ready to go into pitching machine. We want him to get used to the ball moving and all this kind of stuff. And then we'll tell him, we don't do any pitch machine work or really much live ball and motion work until the kid has hit off the tee and kind of grooved his swing in a sense yeah. to where he has a good foundation just because we want them to understand that we're using the ball sitting still to be able to hit the ball that's going to be moving so we don't have to be on time. Yeah. So we give ourselves the opportunity to be late and be early. We're not trying to time it. No. Because, I mean, if we're trying to time it, we're setting kids up for failure when they – Get out of pitching machine. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, to each his own when it comes to a pitching machine in my mind. But um, if you wanted to work off machine, I wouldn't work off it based on my based off my swing. I'd work on it based on tracking the ball. Right. Um, that way the kids get used to picking up fast pitching, whether it be a fastball, curveball, any of that. You can pick up a spin out of the machine and track it all the way down to the pitcher. I'd working. I'd work more about tracking the pitch off a machine more than developing my swing to be where I'm going to see a live arm because it's not the same at all. Any any player that you talk to, college, yeah. major league, any of that, they're going to say they didn't do many reps off the machine at I all. I hated hit off it. Yeah, because it's it's just not realistic. Um, you can get used to hitting a pitch moving at a fast velocity, yes, and seeing it, but as far as developing your swing that's ready for a game, I do not think machines do that very well. I think can mess up your mechanics. Um, and I'll I'll finish it up on this too because this is um, a lot of what I tell people. Brian talked about the weight shift drill being his drill for rhythm and timing, um, and using that drill to kind of create what you're going to see in your head, starting to visualize what's going on with the pitcher so that I can get my body ready to be in the zone right here. The zone, the hitting zone is never going to change. Like it's never going to move forward. It's never going to move backwards. It's always going to be in the same spot. So I'm not trying to necessarily be on time to ball. I'm trying to be on time to hear. If I can be on time to hear and I can learn how not necessarily off the pitching machine, because even with a pitch machine, when folks stick it in there, it varies. Yeah. It may be just slightly, but it varies. Y'all see yeah. my girl's head here. But it does vary, and that's mm -hmm. going to throw the kids' timing off, mm -hmm. and it's going to affect their mechanics. Because you know as well as us, when your timing gets off, the first thing to go is your mechanics. Yeah. As soon as your your timing gets off, your mechanics is what starts falling out of line. Yeah. And if we're not able to understand how to perform the swing, if the ball if there wasn't a ball there, yeah. What if I told the kid to take a full swing without a ball being there, and it'd be a smooth swing? Mm -hmm. We got to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, they are still seeing just as good of improvement, if not better. Take Carl, for example. He has never hit off a pitch machine yep. until he showed up to his first game, mm -hmm. and he's one of the better hitters on the team. Yeah. All he's done is tee work, and he's been talked to about where the pitch is going to be coming from, preparing him for what's going to be happening when he gets in the box yeah. so that his swing can just take over. Mm -hmm. Say hey, Abigail. Y'all, she wants to say hey to y'all so bad. She's just all up in here. 
Um, Chris says she's trying to help her son, myself, but I would love to find a coach nearby. I would agree. I mean, I do know that there are parents. Um, Y'all had, I mean, you you didn't go through this, and that's not, a, I mean, a bad thing for you. I mean, you were doing other things. Yeah. yeah. That's why we have jobs. Look, that's why we have jobs. That's why we're doing what we do is to help your kids get better at this program. And so, again, we're going to be certifying these folks. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you the plan right now is kind of looking to be a early summer push for the first date. Um around probably first week of June. So stay tuned. And again, let your people know, all your coaches. Abigail, you're not getting up here now. Another one from Coach Garcia here. 15 year old trained with 32 inch um, and 32 inch, I'm guessing Victus Maple Bat the last few months. He hits the ball well, has pop. Would you say concerning metal bats, it's better to use a balanced metal bat or Demarini Voodoo one something with a little more load, like a two-piece bat? I'm going to say preference on that. Depends on yeah. um, the Not kid. Good. I was a balanced guy. Trey was a um, Trey was a heavy end load. I'm going to deal with this. Yeah, I would just definitely say it's a preference type thing. Um, whether it feels good in their swing. Um, because just like John said, there's so many different feels people like to have. Um, I would probably just give them the option, maybe go to the Dicks or wherever you're wanting to buy, go let him feel it out, which one he likes more in his hand, get that one. Because if it feels right, it's going to feel right when you swing. Um, and if you get something that is based on somebody else's preference and he's in the game swinging with it and it don't feel right to him, his swing's going to feel off. So, yeah, I would just let your son determine that more so than anybody else. And how it feels in his hand. But yeah. Um, yeah, guys, y'all got anything else? Probably about to get ready to wrap it up. Um, if y'all got any last questions, please um, ask them now. Forever hold your peace. One thing I don't know if you mentioned it here. I do. I will say this: um, if I knew what I knew now in regards to how easy it was to control the bat if you're using the body the right way, I would have went with a more inloaded bat rather than bounce. I do feel like your inloaded bat's going to have a little more pop just because you got a little more weight right there in the barrel where you're hitting yeah, the ball. If you, but it's really personal preference. I yeah. mean, it's. Really, it depends on how you feel the whip of the bat. That's right. Absolutely. Um, yes. To me, um, I've gotten into the habit of when I'm sitting here, I like to play with a knob in my pinky to have this motion start happening in my bat. So that once I load, I can really yank and whip that bottom of that knob through the ball. And yeah, I think inload bat would help with that feel a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I don't want you to get inloaded bat and it goes like this. Right. I mean, the end, and that, it has to be personal preference. Yeah has to be fit to the kid. Um, is there a way to buy an adult bat and one-hander go up in size with no DVD um, for a discount? Unfortunately, we don't have any of those right now. Um, the DVD is not charging you any extra. It's actually going to be the same link that's sent to you. It's the same video that's on YouTube. Um, it's basically like an instructional. It's like getting the instructions in the box, pretty yeah. much all it is. Um, Already bought a program, youth bat. That's why she's asking. I want to get the adult next size. Just need the bats, though. Um, possibly email us at support. We may can do free shipping or something like that, but really we don't have any discounts right now, Chris. Any questions, folks? All right. We sure appreciate your time yeah. today. Thank you so much for um, joining us. Yeah. We will be here again next week, next Thursday. If you have questions between now and then, uh, be sure to reach out to us on the text hotline. You can find that number inside of the Camwood program uh, portal. And we look forward to seeing you guys right here next week on the Camwood Live. Y'all have a great weekend. See you soon.